All right. I am just going to, I'm going to get started here and people can just join as, as they're coming in. So welcome. I'm super excited about this webinar, How to Build Momentum, Streamline Processes, and Grow. This is super important. Like, I read a ton of books and over and over you hear, like, growing a business is all about those processes. If you don't have the processes in place, you're not going to be able to grow. You have to have the processes in place to grow your business. Just some housekeeping. If you have any questions during the presentation, type them into the chat box and we'll answer them at the end of the presentation during the Q&A. Have you ever struggled to create engaging content that your ideal client would be interested in? Um, I'm sure everybody has struggled with this problem. Without ongoing content that engages your ideal client, your prospects might buy from someone else. Right, that ongoing content is super important. It's super important to get your ideal client engaged, to take action, to get them to take that next step. It positions you as an authority. And it also tells Google that you're the best solution for the person that's searching online. Have you ever struggled deciding what processes to create in order to be more efficient. And this is super important. Like I said, if you're doing everything custom, it's going to take you so much longer. It's going to be hard to be profitable. It's going to be impossible to grow because you'll be doing everything like for the first time custom every single time. And um, it, it just takes too much time. You'll never be able to bring on more work. And when I say a process like being custom, what I mean is you can still do custom work, like we do custom websites, but we have a very set process that we bring everybody through that is repeatable even though it, the end result is very custom, specific to that person. Your interior design is absolutely the same. You can still make it custom and specific for them. But like, let's say you're doing kitchens every time. The kitchen like is going to be unique to them, but the process for doing a kitchen would be like a set process that is repeatable. Without processes in place, you will work longer hours, not get as much done, and be more likely to make mistakes. Absolutely. Like having set processes in place helps quality control. It helps you deliver a higher end product. And especially since if you have those processes in place, you're not focused on doing, you know, like developing the process during the project. So your mind, your energy can go towards like, you know, making that project, taking that project to the next level. That's where your energy should be spent. Now, if this is your first time here, I'm Deborah Scarpa. Next to me in the picture is Ashley Blazing. She's our operations manager. We also have... Taylor with us today. She is a uh, digital marketer on our team. We at Home Designer Marketing, we help interior designers transform their brands to get found online, win their dream clients, and work smarter by streamlining their processes, right? That's what we're going to talk about, working smarter by streamlining their processes. Our team guides your business to success with custom branding, custom websites, logos, local SEO, social media, email marketing, and improving those processes. 
super important. I'll tell you a back end story. Um, I've had my business, well, it's over 35 years now. So really long time for many, many of those years, 25 of those years, I didn't focus on processes. I didn't grow my team. I mostly just like did the project work. I always tried to grow my business and I just couldn't figure out like why I wasn't able to get there. It was because I wasn't focused on building those processes. Once I started building the team and building those processes out, then our business really started growing. So, and I see the same thing with the interior designers we work with. You have to have those processes in place to get to that next level. And if we're ever going to hire somebody to help us, like Ashley would always say, we need to have the processes in place before you hire that person. Because if you're going to hire somebody and you don't have the processes in place, you cannot expect them to be a mind reader. You have way too much knowledge for them to like be able to get it right and be successful, right? You want that new hire to be successful. And in order to do that, you have to have those processes in place. This webinar is approved by NKBA. We're super excited to be associated with them. Um, um, right here is the course title, the instructor, the delivery method, the amount of CEUs. Um, Taylor will put that in chat. We'll also be emailing that out after the webinar with a certificate um, if you need that for um, to report for your CEU credits. Today's agenda, strategies to grow your business, Build marketing momentum by creating engaging content and staying visible. Streamline your processes to improve your services and save time. I'm such a huge fan. Um, I personally hate spending my time doing all the like little tasks that can be automated or done better. So those processes can really help. Like you save so much time. And I know we're all super busy trying to get so much done every day. You really need these processes in order to, you know, get to spend time on the things that you love to do that really are high level that are going to give you that return, you know, that are going to help grow your revenue in your business. Um, Taylor will also put, if you haven't taken advantage of it yet, a link to our free brand website and SEO audit. Um, absolutely take advantage of that if you haven't already signed up. Um, I spend quite a bit of time with you reviewing your brand online and assessing like if it's working or what needs to change in order to get better results. So first we're going to talk about strategies to grow your business. So I like to think about growing your business in, in steps. One is strategy, like it's just like you going to meet with um, with a client to figure out, you know, what the project is about. Like, what problems do you need to be solving? Uh, what's the style? What, you know, what's the project about? So that is like the strategy is building a plan. Who are you targeting? How are you going to position that brand to attract your ideal client? What kind of, you know, how are we going to tell your story? What's unique about you? That is strategy. That needs to be done first. It's just like you going into a project and not having a consultation with the client. You would have no idea what to do 
for the project, right? The project, they wouldn't be very happy with the project because it wouldn't be what they wanted. Strategy is the same when you're building your brand, your website, everything. You absolutely need to be working with somebody who's willing to take the time to get to know you and understand what's unique about you. Who are you targeting? What services are you offering? What is your process? All of that is super important. Step two is building the brand, creating all those brand assets like your logo, your website, the copywriting, um, maybe your social media pages, like building that brand. And then step three is driving the traffic, consistently staying in front of your ideal client and improving those processes. So a lot of times when somebody comes to me, they need leads and they want to start at step three, but they haven't really done the work to build the foundation by doing step one and step two. So I just want to share with you how important it is to make sure that you're doing all the steps first. You're doing strategy first, then you're building all the assets, making sure that they're going to generate interest, build trust, and convert, right? And then you're going to drive the traffic. If you don't do strategy or you just start out with driving traffic and they come to your website and it's not going to, you know, and it's not positioned correctly, you know, people are just going to close the tab. So that's how important it is. So I'm giving me give you an example. So here's a website before, right? She looks like it's more like a hobby. And here is her after. It doesn't matter what style you are. But if somebody comes to this website versus this one, right? Same work, same services, they're going to trust this one more than they're going to trust this one. They're going to be more. This one's going to generate more interest, build more trust, and convert more prospects than this one, which is super important. So if you're up here, right, and you don't do this, and you don't do this, and you just start driving traffic to a website that is like this, right, somebody's going to clo close the tab. Versus if you're driving traffic to a website like this, people are going to be more interested. And here's another one, totally different style before and here's afterwards, right? So same thing. If they found this website, you know, when they're doing a search in Google, you know, they would find this one more engaging and be more interested in contacting this client than this one. Right. Align your marketing with your goals. So, like the first thing when we're working with somebody is I want to know what their goals are. Right. So, let's say you're pretty happy with your leads and your the clients you're getting, the projects you're getting the revenue that you're making. You always need to be doing some type of marketing. Maybe it's a smaller investment because you're happy and, and you don't need much change, right? Let's say you have really big goals and you want to really significantly like grow your business. You really want to like I'll step on the gas, right? I really want to grow this business in the next three years. Um, I want to hire people. I want bigger projects, right? Then like you step on the gas. You need to make a larger investment in your marketing to create more visibility. I absolutely recommend that not just for our clients, but even for ourselves. Like if things are slowing down, I'm not pulling back on the marketing. I'm actually stepping on the gas. How how can we like get more visibility? They're always, and I'm saying this because I know 
some designers are struggling and, and a little slow right now. Like step on the gas. If you don't have any work, even step on the gas by making phone calls, you know, connect with vendors, connect with contractors, uh, call your past clients, um, you know, step on the gas, make connections, make calls, do outreach. You know, if you can work with a marketing company, that's even better. But don't sit around and wait for something to happen. And I say that because you don't want to be out of business. Really step on the gas if you need the work. And then I always like, you know, it's super important to track what you're doing. So even if it is calls or whatever it is. So marketing activity, sales activity, company revenue. Absolutely. Like we have a chart we go over every week that has our marketing activity at the top, sales activity in the middle, company revenue at the bottom. Right? So if we slack up on the marketing activity, then there's less sales, then there's less revenue. If we increase our marketing activity, our sales go up, our revenue goes up. So really think about how you're tracking everything or track it if you're not and put it in that order. So you can really see like we did that years ago and it was really obvious, like, wow, we really need to step up our marketing activity if we want to grow as much as, you know, if we want to um, grow as much as we want, we need more sales activity, right? If you're happy, like I said, with where you're at, then you could do less marketing activity, less sales, less, you know, same revenue. The thing you want to avoid is going up and down like on a roller coaster where you're so busy working on a project that you don't have time for any marketing activity, don't have time for any sales activity. And then you're done with that big project. And then all of a sudden you have no work. And then those months of no work eats up all your profit that you made from the big project you just finished. So you want to have steady work. And I know I get a lot of people and they're concerned about getting too many leads. I, I would never be concerned about that. There's things that you can set up to, you know, disqualify people if you're having too many. Um, it's m like so much. Just think if you had more leads, you could actually be more selective about who you want to work with. That's where you want to be and you want to have like a waiting list. Build marketing momentum by creating engaging content and staying visible. So Google absolutely is going to rank you higher than your competitor if you're creating like more consistent content that's engaging than your competitors. If, you, if your competitor, if you're not doing anything and your competition is, they're going to rank higher. That That's just Google wants to, um, you know, they're going to see the companies that are doing the most online. They're going to see them as the authority and they're going to rank them higher when somebody is searching. So let's talk about saving time when creating content. I know we're all super busy. Creating content is like one of the harder things to do, I really feel like, um, where, you know, it's to create really good, engaging content. Um, you know, it can take time, but if you have a process for it, it can be so much easier. And you guys actually have like a lot of content already that you just maybe didn't even think that people were interested in. So 
use content you already have. You might already have processes set up. You might already have like an idea of like, you know, new, new trends. Like if your kitchen, uh, if you're, if you do kitchens, there might be new trends in um, products, uh, colors, you know, there's, there's so much content that you guys already have. Take notes. Think about taking notes when working on a project by speaking into a note app on your phone. So there's so many devices now, like on your phone and apps, where the, even the notes app, you, you can speak into so many of the apps and they'll type out your speech. So think about when you're working on a project. And maybe you get to your car, you get to some place that is quiet, just taking even five minutes and pull up your phone, pull up one of the notes app and speak into it about, you know, like I said, if you're working on a kitchen, maybe there's um, some conversation that you were having that, um, with the contractor, with the client, and you're thinking that, you know, that's great information that you wish everybody would knew, knew about, that would be excellent content to take notes on, and then, you know, create some content on it, whether it's a blog post, social media post, um, think about content is stuff that you're already doing. Have a cloud-based file management system set up. This is super important. So you don't have to be doing everything yourself. You know, um, have a system set up online so you can upload your content and have somebody else help you. Um, plan your content in time blocks. So what I mean by that is, you know, it. When people are saying that you need to be on social media every day, people don't have time for that. They don't have time to like think about what content they're going to write, put together images and post it like, like daily. That's just not very realistic. So think about planning your content in time blocks and using social media scheduling software. Um, in order to like schedule it out. So you have a big block of time, maybe it's a Friday and you're like, okay, I've taken all these notes um, and I've taken some pictures or, or different things. And on this Friday, I'm going to kind of plan it out. I'm going to use social media um, software and that way, I don't have to do it every day. You guys are too busy to be doing that. Um, content idea, brain dump. So think about like a project case study would be, you know, what would your clients be interested in? Uh, stories about a past project, before and after photos, um, like inst installation, like photos or videos. Posts on content on problems you solve. Questions your ideal clients are asking. New trends, products, product selection tips, tips for space planning, styling tips, process checklists, testimonials, reviews about you and, and your business, awards, media. You know, there's so many different topics that you could be posting on. Meet your prospects where they're at. So what I mean by that is when somebody is looking to hire somebody for your services, are they just starting their search? Are they looking at several people and trying to consider who they want to contact, who they want to work with? Are they at the bottom of the funnel, which is they're ready to hire somebody. 
they're really considering making that decision and signing up with somebody. So like top of the funnel, again, up here, awareness. Maybe they're going to hire somebody this next year, right? Consideration. Maybe they have picked three different companies that they're interviewing, that they're considering. Typically, if they're, you know, if they're hiring somebody to do a big project, they're probably interviewing more than one company or, or even looking at more than one company, right? Bottom of the funnel, taking action. They're, they're like, maybe they just bought a house and they need it. They need to hire somebody quick. So different type of, of content can be a better fit for, for where the client is at in their sales process, right? It could be, uh, it can be different. Project case study framework. So I want to give you an example of, of how the framework, the structure of how to write good copy. And first, I want to just talk about like even your website copy. Think about copy as you're having a conversation with somebody. Like if I look at a lot of people's websites, they start out with about me, about my business. Like really think about nobody really cares about you. All they want is they want their problem solved. Think about a teenager that's kind of selfish, right? It's kind of like that. Um, not that they don't eventually like care about you, but really their goal is to get, you know, it is is to get their problem solved. So think about content as you were having an in-person sales conversation with them. If we started out the conversation and I was like, I'm Deborah. I've owned my business for this long and I've won this many awards and blah, 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 all about me. You would be like, oh my gosh, Deborah, like I'm tired of talking to you. You're obviously not interested in me. So I'm going to go talk to somebody else, right? That would be just the same as having website content that starts out about you, right? Think about content as you are having a sales conversation where it starts out talking about what type of project they're they're doing like oh you're interested in doing a kitchen what you know is it a new project is it like a new build a remodel like what type of kitchen is it what type of style are you looking for? What, you know, are you wanting to move walls? Or are you just wanting to make a few changes? Like understanding the project would be the first part of the conversation, right? Then the next part of the conversation would be like, yeah, I've, I've done projects like that, or there's different solutions for, um, for projects like that. And then the conversation would go to, yeah, I've done projects like that. And here's some information about me and my company. And maybe here's some testimonials, right? That's about building trust after we've already had a conversation about the project. So think about your, any type of content that you're creating as being more of a, how you would have a conversation. Um, so if you're writing like a project case study, same kind of format, start out with who was this for? What was the name of the project? Describe the size of the project. Somebody wants to read it and identify, oh yeah, my project was kind of like that. I want to, I want to like the one I'm interested in is like that. So I want to read more about this. And then next, what type of photos or images best represent the problem you solved in your solution? So then they see photos like, yeah, that that's 
exactly what I'm looking for, right? Or maybe they're saying, nope, that's not it, right? Um, but, you know, you want to like take them through like it's a story. Results, how did your client feel once the project was done? Call to action. What action do you want someone to take after reading your project case study? Right, what, what action? Sometimes like if you don't tell them what to do, they won't do anything. Like you have to guide them to what step you want them to take next. So that gives you an idea of like thinking about your content and, and the framework. Social media posts, post engaging images and captions. So, you know, we went over some of the brain dump kind of ideas, maybe project behind the scene, educational content, quotes, videos. Obviously, videos are, you know, you know, they're doing fantastic. Um, some personal content right? Um, we don't want it to be all personal. People are coming there because they're interested in, you know, in solving their problem. Uh, use hashtags wisely so they make them relevant and specific to, you know, to what you're offering. Uh, tell stories about current and past projects post project images more than once. You absolutely can post them more than once. Partner with influencers and brands for wider reach. Use software to schedule your content. I put that in there again on purpose because it's super important. Post when your followers are online and respond to, and respond to, um, to any comments that they make. Streamline your processes to improve your services and save time. So key systems for every business. Cloud-based file storage system for your project photos. That's super important. Um, if you want to grow, you know, if you want to grow, think about not doing everything yourself. You know, whether it's a marketing agency or somebody else, everybody's working so virtual these days. Like you really need to have some type of cloud-based file storage system. You know, uh, Google Drive, Dropbox, you know, whatever it is. We mostly use Google Drive um, to store photos. System for creating content. I have a framework that you just fill out. System for posting content online. Client onboarding system. How do you onboard clients every time? Maybe make it consistent. Focus on making it a positive user experience. All of a sudden, this client has purchased, you know, it's a large purchase, and they're probably getting nervous having a uh, you know really solid onboarding system and process set up can make your client feel more confident that they made the right choice right they're going to get nervous at certain points during the project sales pipeline yeah so you know, a sales pipeline that you can be following up with. We can even, you know, automate some of the sales pipeline. Absolutely. Because, you know, as you get busier, it's harder and harder to keep up with everything. Use software that will save time. So there's so many different ways that you can save time. And if you're not very technical, Work with somebody, you know, to help you with setting up, setting up and managing a lot of the software. Today, you know, is more technical than ever. And, you know, it's important to have somebody that you can consistently go to that can help 
like you with with software if that is not your strong suit. Um, and I'm just saying that because a lot of our interior designers um, really struggle and they're not great at um, at software and then we help them with that. So just make sure that you're getting the support that you need so it's not holding you back. It absolutely can save you time. It's um, so important. So some marketing and sales software that we recommend. Online calendars, absolutely. Like, you know, uh, we, we use like high level and um, calendars and it's a high level CRM software. And then with the automations and everything that we, we use for ourselves and we use um, to sign up clients. If you, you know, signed up for this webinar, you saw some of the automations and the calendar and everything. Um, it's super important. If you know, if you can't do something like that, then even something like Calendly and is, is like super important. And think about like, if you integrate it with your website, you don't have to have, you know, everything available, all your calendars. Typically we do multiple calendars. Think about on the website, just having a qualification call where somebody could sign up for that, but maybe you have other calendars that you're not sharing with everybody like on your website, but you send out individually to people um, to book other, other types of appointments. CRM to store contacts. Again, we use Go High Level. Um, Absolutely, like, because it has so much functionality, email and text message marketing. Um, but, you know, you need to just have some way of like storing all your contacts. So when somebody signs up on your website, books an appointment with you or contacts you, all the information goes into the CRM. If possible, they get automations that can even be like synced up with software, like, you know, if you have project management software or, you know, bookkeeping software. Um, so it's sharing the contacts information um, through all these software so you don't have to retype it. It's really helping you work smarter. Social media scheduling software, I already talked about that. Integration software. So that integration software is when two types of software is talking. So let's say our go level, um, our go high level CRM software, when somebody books an appointment or schedules on our calendar, um, you know, Zapier, is an integration software that makes it talk to other software. So there's some software, typically Zapier, that takes information from one software and will send it to another like type of software. So it helps it talk. So integration software is where it helps the information transfer from one software to the other absolutely can save a ton of time. Online file storage. So um, example for, you know, like Google Drive or Dropbox for your photos. Online meeting software. Obviously like Zoom, there's other, there's other options. But think about like when somebody books an appointment with me, like our Go High Level software automatically puts the Zoom link like on my books and on my calendar, sends the client like an automation with the Zoom link and everything because it adds the Zoom link automatically. There's so much of it that is automated and it even tags the person to add their contact information to our 
um, bookkeeping software, and then it also creates a task in our project management software. Like it does so many different things automatically that I used to have to do by hand and I don't do any of that, right? I don't even have to follow up with the person because I have an automation that's like making sure that, um, you know, they're getting a couple of appointment reminders. Um, except credit cards online, password software, um, so many things to help you be more efficient. Using templates and questionnaires. Absolutely, like templates can help you even if you're customizing it. Like templates can help you get 50%, 80% of the way there. So you don't have to do it but from scratch every time. So follow-up email and text message, like one-off templates, new lead questionnaires, email templates with a calendar link. Absolutely. Like, you know, don't spend time going back and forth trying to get somebody on the calendar. There's so many more efficient ways to spend your time and, and for things to be done. Appointment confirmation, proposal templates, um, client onboarding templates, Google review email template. It's super hard for people to know where to go to give you a Google review. It's really nice if you send them an email that has a link to where they're supposed to give the review and an outline of some ideas of like what would be good to see. Like help direct them on like how you want them to re respond in that in that review. It'll get you better reviews too. Types of automations. So I know I mentioned some of them already. Appointment, email and text confirmation and reminders. Absolutely. Like, I love those. I used to have to like try to do those myself. And sometimes I was really good at it. Sometimes I was busy. I wasn't really great at it. And then not all the time my appointments would show up, right? Having that system in place makes it so like, I always know if somebody's going to show up or not. Like it's, it's so much better. Um, appointments automatically added to your calendar, website form, email confirmations and follow-ups, post-purchase like follow-up emails, post-project follow-up emails to generate like Google testimonials, Google reviews, um, automatically add new clients to a CRM and invoicing software. I just talked about that. Automatically send new email subscribers, your latest like newsletter. And then here, setting up integrations. Typically, integrations are using the software Zapier. I don't know if you've heard of that before. It's a pretty popular um, software. Most people have heard of it. Again, it is helping one type of software talk to another type of software. So for example, your online calendar and your website or your website form and your CRM or your CRM and your sales pipeline or your CRM and your marketing software. CRM and project management software. One of the reasons why I love Go High Level, I mean, there's a lot of different solutions, but I do love Go High Level is because um, it's kind of an all-in-one. It does a lot of this stuff, not all of it, but some of it we have to have separate software, but it does, like, it's, it's nice that you can have text, reminders and email reminders and the pipeline and all of that and the marketing email marketing all in one is really nice. Um, CRM and your proposal software. CRM and your bookkeeping software. I know I talked about that. Uh, your website and project management software. Keep growing 
by continually improving your processes. This is super important, like software changes, things change, things need to be updated, things break, you know, maybe maybe Zapier is integrating two different types of software. One of them has been updated and now it breaks and it needs to be fixed. You need to be, or maybe your process changed and now you need to update it. So when the processes are out of date, everything starts falling apart because then your process isn't working and then things start taking a long time and then you end up doing them by hand. You absolutely like need to keep those up to date. So continually reevaluate your needs as the business change, set up or update your processes as your services change, create processes to ensure a new hire is successful. This is super important. Like, don't expect a new hire to be a mind reader. Make sure you have processes in place so that new hire, you know, can follow that and be successful. One of the um, software we use all the time, which I highly recommend, is um, Loom Videos, L-O-O-M. And you can you know, make a video uh, sharing your screen, or you can just like, you know, um, talk through it, but creating, like you can even write, sometimes I do this, I write out instructions, and then I bring up my screen, I open up Loom, bring up my screen, go, and I talk through the steps because I always add more details, right? So, and then I send that Loom video to, um, to our team or whoever, like you can make a Loom video for clients going over something in detail. You could send it to your team. You could send it to your vendors. Um, absolute, like it is so inexpensive and we use it like I use it multiple times a day um absolutely update or add new calendars as your availability change right I I just made some changes to my calendar the availability to open it up a little bit more um streamline like if you're at an event or something, you know that more leads are going to be coming in or something, maybe you need to make some change to that calendar. Streamline your processes to become more profitable, save time and get more done and, and just get better results. Absolutely. So again, I'm Deborah Scarpa. I hope you've learned a lot for in this webinar from Home Designer Marketing. Again, I know that in chat there, um, Taylor put a link to our brand um, website, SEO audit. So feel free to sign up for that. And then I'll spend some time like um, answering any questions if you have any. Happy to help. I know I went over a lot of information um, it's like super important. I know Ashley always has it as a goal of hers to do so many processes a week or um, a month, right? So she has it like set up always that she's either doing new processes or uh, updating processes continually you do a little bit at a time, then, um, you know, you'll, you'll eventually have a whole list of processes for everything you do. And that is also why it's, it's really good to like, not be offering everything in the world as your like service to like be more specific and scale down like what you're offering and what you're delivering. Because as you can imagine, if you're trying to offer so many services, the problem is you can't get really, really good at your processes in order to continually, you know, depending on your team size, but 
in order to pick up momentum and become really, really good, you need to be constantly improving those processes as you grow. And if you have less services, less offerings, um, then it's easier to, you know, continually improve your processes to improve your end result, be more profitable, be more efficient, save more time. All right. What are you guys thinking? You have any questions? I hope this was helpful. Feel free to write in chat, like what you're gonna work on, what you've learned. Love some feedback from you. Um, but thank you so much everybody for joining us and um, set a goal for doing so many processes a week. All right, have a great rest of the day and thank you so much for joining us today.